जाना शास्त्र विचार नहीं कनिक न सद्धर्म संस्थापक लोकानाम हितकारण त्रिभुवने मन शरण्याकन And now text eight. Tanamarupacharatadi sukirtananu smrityokramena rasanamana siniyoja tishtan vrajetaranuragi jananugami kalam neyed akilamit upadesha saram. Translation The essence of all advice is that one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours a day, in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities, and eternal pastimes, thereby gradually engaging one's tongue and mind. In this way, one should reside in Vraja, Goloka Vrindavan Dham, and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees. One should follow in the footsteps of the Lord's beloved devotees, who are deeply attached to His devotional service. PURPORT Since the mind may be one's enemy or one's friend, one has to train the mind to become his friend. The Krishna Consciousness Movement is especially meant for training the mind to be always engaged in Krishna's business. The mind contains hundreds and thousands of impressions, not only of this life, but also of many, many lives of the past. These impressions sometimes come in contact with one another and produce contradictory pictures. In this way, the mind's function can become dangerous for a conditioned soul. Students of psychology are aware of the mind's various psychological changes. In Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, verse 6, it is said, Yam yam vapis maran bhavam, yajat yante kalevaram, tam tam evaiti konteya, sadathad bhava bhavata. Which means, quote, Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. Unquote. At the time of death, the mind and intelligence of a living entity create the subtle form of a certain type of body for the next life. If the mind suddenly thinks of something not very congenial, one has to take a corresponding birth in the next life. On the other hand, if one can think of Krishna at the time of death, he can be transferred to the spiritual world, Goloka Vrindavan. This process of transmigration is very subtle. 
Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami advises devotees to train their minds in order that they will be unable to remember anything other than Krishna. Similarly, the tongue should be trained to speak only of Krishna and to taste only Krishna Prasad. Srila Rupa Goswami further advises Tishtan Vrijay. One should live in Vrindavan or any part of Rajabhumi. Rajabhumi, or the land of Vrindavan, is supposed to be 84 kroshas in area. One krosha equals two square miles. When one makes Vrindavan his residence, he should take shelter of an advanced devotee there. In this way, one should always think of Krishna and his pastimes. This is further elucidated by Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1 2 294. Krishnam Smaran Janam Chasya Preshtam Nija Samihitam Tat Tat Kata Ratash Chaso Kuryad Vasam Vraje Sada, which means, quote, a devotee should always reside in the transcendental realm of Raja and always engage in Krishnam Smaran Janam Chasya Preshtam, the remembrance of Sri Krishna and his beloved associates. By following in the footsteps of such associates and by entering under their eternal guidance, one can acquire an intense desire to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Unquote. Again, Srila Rupa Goswami states in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1 2 295 Seva Sadaka Rupena Siddha Rupena Chatrahi Tad Bhava Lipsuna Karya Vrajaloka Nusarata, which means, quote, In the transcendental realm of Vraja or Vrajadam, one should serve the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, with a feeling similar to that of his associates, and one should place himself under the direct guidance of a particular associate of Krishna, and should follow in his footsteps. This method is applicable both in the stage of sadhana, or spiritual practices executed while in the stage of bondage, and in the stage of sadhya or God-realization, when one is a siddha purusha or a spiritually perfect soul." Unquote. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur has commented as follows upon this verse, Quote, One who has not yet developed interest in Krishna consciousness should give up all material motives and train his mind by following the progressive regulative principles, namely chanting and remembering Krishna and his name, form, quality, pastimes, and so forth. In this way, after developing a taste for such things, one should try to live in Vrindavan and pass his time constantly remembering Krishna's name, fame, pastimes, and qualities under the direction and protection of an expert devotee. This is the sum and substance of all instruction regarding the cultivation of devotional service. In the neophyte stage, one should always engage in hearing Krishna Katha. This is called Shravana Dasha, the stage of hearing. By constantly hearing the transcendental holy name of Krishna and hearing of his transcendental form, qualities, and pastimes, one can attain to the stage of acceptance called Varana Dasha. When one attains this stage, he becomes attached to the hearing of Krishna Katha. When one is able to chant in ecstasy, he attains the stage of Smarana Vasta, the stage of remembering. Recollection, absorption, meditation, 
constant remembrance and trance are the five items of progressive Krishna smadana. At first, remembrance of Krishna may be interrupted at intervals, but later remembrance proceeds uninterrupted. When remembrance is uninterrupted, it becomes concentrated and is called meditation. When meditation expands and becomes constant, it is called anusmriti. By uninterrupted and unceasing anusmriti, one enters the stage of samadhi, or spiritual trance. After smarana dasha, or samadhi, has fully developed, the soul comes to understand his original constitutional position. At that time, he can perfectly and clearly understand his eternal relationship with Krishna. That is called Sampati Dasha, the perfection of life. Chaitanya Charitamrita advises those who are neophytes to give up all kinds of motivated desires and simply engage in the regulative devotional service of the Lord according to the directions of Scripture. In this way, a neophyte can gradually develop attachment for Krishna's name, fame, form, qualities, and so forth. When one has developed such attachment, he can spontaneously serve the lotus feet of Krishna even without following the regulative principles. This stage is called Raga Bhakti, or devotional service in spontaneous love. At that stage, the devotee can follow in the footsteps of one of the eternal associates of Krishna in Vrindavan. This is called Raganuga Bhakti. Raganuga Bhakti, or spontaneous devotional service, can be executed in the Shantaras when one aspires to be like Krishna's cows, or the stick or flute in the hand of Krishna, or the flowers around Krishna's neck. In the Dasyaras, one follows in the footsteps of servants like Chitraka, Patrika, or Raktika. In the friendly Sakyaras, one can become a friend like Baladev, Sridama, or Sudama. In the Vatsalya Ras, characterized by parental affection, one can become like Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda. And in the Madhurya Ras, characterized by conjugal love, one can become like Srimati Radharani or her lady friends, such as Lalita, and her serving maids or Manjaris like Rupa and Rati. This is the essence of all instruction in the matter of devotional service. Unquote. 